Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome once again to our week nine of our devotion on Think About It. So last week, we did miss our devotion last week. I do apologize for skipping it last week with the uh, travel I had for work, revival we had last week. I just run out of time. Uh, this week, we're going to cover prayer. Uh, the Lord gave me this. Last Sunday morning on the way to church, I was uh, thinking about this, thinking about uh, actually our boys' Sunday school class, and uh, thinking about over in Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer, and and the and Lord put this on my heart, so this is kind of what we're going to cover this week. Uh, we'll start out, we're going to begin with a song for the week. This is Bring It All to Him from our youth ladies group, recorded sometime back, I'm not sure. So let's listen to this. We need to bring it all to Him. Each and everything we do, we need to bring it all to Him. So let's get started. And as always, we're going to start out with prayer today. So Lord God in heaven, Lord, thank you for once again for the wonderful day to bring us here to this devotion. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this devotion. I pray that you would uh, use this devotion, Lord, this today, Lord, and help it to uh, help us understand the example of prayer that Jesus gave us, how we can use it in our personal life and our private prayer time lord and even if we're praying in, in front of others from time to time lord i pray that you could just help us lord and use it lord in jesus name we do pray amen so one of the things i told you this is a uh, kind of uh something that really got thinking about in our boys sunday school class but one of the things we do in our boys sunday school class is we ask for volunteers to pray at the beginning and end of each class usually we get the same result and that's crickets nobody nobody wants to be the one to stand up in prayer we do have some boys that will but um but i remember i was thinking about that and i remember the the first time our preacher asked if i would pray after service i panicked i, I asked him i said not to put me on the spot i just couldn't do it and not because i couldn't pray to god but I couldn't do it in front of others. I was I, I was afraid I'd mess up. I'd do it wrong. And uh, but truthfully, there's no wrong way to pray. It's just like talking talking with anyone, just like a conversation between you and God. 
Um, so I got to think about the Lord's Prayer, how it shows us to pray, pray, in, or the Lord's Prayer shows us to pray in private, but it can be used anytime we pray. And and we need to pray, you know, over like like a meal or for driving somewhere, like to start a church. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 says, Being careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications, make your thanksgiving, excuse me, by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. We need and we should pray for everything. And so there's times we're going to, you know, there's times we're going to have our private time and, and the Lord's Prayer kind of is more for that private time. But there are times that we're going to be in front of others and, 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 and pray in front of others. And I think that can, it can also help us in, in those instances too. So as I said last Sunday, the Lord put this on my heart to share as share the example that Jesus gave us. And after I'd done some study, and I've been studying on this all this week, I realized I couldn't cover it in one week, and or I didn't want to cover it in one week. The reason is, is I wanted to break this down in several parts, and, and as our devotion says, it's think about it. So I want you to spend some time thinking about each individual part, and I want to give you, you know, just take a week to, to think about it and really let it sink in how it can help us in our prayer life in our personal devotion time, devotion time. So let's look, we'll start, it's going to be in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. The first verse, and that's just the only one I'm going to cover today, says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So it says, after the after this manner, therefore. And, and, and y'all know from our preacher at church, when we see that word, therefore, we need to look back and see what it's there for. Uh, every time I see that now, I make it makes me go back. Our preacher uses that example so many times. So in verse 5, verse 5, so we're in Matthew chapter 6. So verse 5 tells us prayer is not for others to see, but to God. And we do need to remember that. We're not praying to impress others. We're not praying for others. We're praying to God. We're praying to God in our own heart. Uh, verse 6 tells us, this should be private between us and God. And then Matthew 6, 7 says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speech. And so I looked at that word vain repetitions. It says not to use vain repetitions. And, th and I think this can mean many things, one being not to repeat the same words every time, because they can become meaningless. And and I'm personally guilty of that myself sometimes, just repeating the same words when I pray, or every time I pray, I may start out the same time. And 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 they and it can become meaningless if we're not careful. We need to remember, you know, um, I, I always start out my prayers, Lord God in heaven, thank you once again for the beautiful and wonderful day today. I, I, I do that just about every time. And, and sometimes it hits me that I'm just repeating something over and over and over again. And, and as long as I can remember why I say that or, or why I start that. And I'm going to go over that a little bit here in a second. <clears throat> second is not using rehearsed prayers. Uh, I think about um, uh, at um, some of the things I do for work, uh, th there's some folks that will get up from time to time and pray. And they will write their prayer out on a piece of paper and read it word for word. And, and I don't know that that's a bad thing. I think it bothers me sometimes as, as it's pre-rehearsed. And, and when we pre-rehearse a prayer like that, I feel like it's more for the impression of others. Um, as it talked about in, in Matthew verse 7 there, it says, uh, 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 They think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So they're trying to sound impressive i guess and and prayer shouldn't sound impressive impressive to others um so we're not trying to sound good to others or or and not but we're talking directly to god now now th saying that i don't you know teaching small children sometimes we do want to teach them to pray and i remember when i was little my parents they taught me that old little prayer uh, before i went to bed they'd have me repeat this prayer and that was just them teaching me how to pray. And there's nothing wrong with it with small children. 
it says, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And we're all familiar with that. And, and, I, and that's okay for small children. We need to teach small children. But as we grow, we, 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 we are in our relationship with God, the, the, the prayer should become more personal for us to God. So, uh, in, in, in saying that, we've all heard uh, other folks repeating the Lord's Prayer as a prayer. Uh, and, and using that to pray to God, and, and we've seen it in, in TV movies and uh, different things. I think about like TV movies sometimes when a, uh, something's going on, you'll, you'll hear groups of people just using that Lord's Prayer, just repeating it. And that's not, not, that was, I don't believe that was the intent at all for this. Um, Jesus, he didn't say, repeat after me in verse 9. He said, after this manner. And, and that was just, it was given for an example or a blueprint to follow. And that's all it was. Uh, so let's dig into this example a little bit and, and, see, and see how we should use it. So starting off, it says, Our Father, which art in heaven. And, and the way I think about that is, is uh, I, done, I read this years ago, and, and it's always kind of stuck in my mind. It said, this, this is like an address. It's like the address to your house. If someone wants to come to find your house and you want someone to come over, you'll give them an address and then they'll put it in their GPS and then they can get to your house. They have the address. Now, I use this. Now, now this is a, like the GPS or God positioning system. If we think about it like that, our Father, and, and, it's, and it says our Father, and the word our, our right there, indicates everyone that is saved okay and that's everyone that's saved and father is capitalized so it points us to god the creator and we only become sons of god through faith in christ so we say our father we're saying our we're saved and we're saying and we acknowledge him as who he is he is our Father. He is the God of. He is the Creator, and and He's He's. So the next part of this verse reminds us is, is another part of the address. It said, "Which art in heaven," because not only is He our Creator and our Father, He is above all things. He is control of everything, and we're acknowledging that when we say that. Our and. Um, and and I do use that sometimes when I start out to pray, and and just because I want to make sure when I pray to God, I know I'm talking. You know, I, I acknowledge I'm talking to Him. I'm acknowledge acknowledging Him, and I'm and I'm acknowledging where He is and where He exists. <clears throat> so that's really all I want to cover this week. But I want you to spend some time in thinking about verse nine, how you can apply this to your prayer life, and how. This can help your personal relationship with God. So come back next week. We will build a little more on this. All right.